Hey y'all, Scott here. I just got bread for a dollar. That's one of my biggest fears, was talking to somebody they really liked them. Turned out they weren't a person, they were just an affordable price. I despise deals. Somebody offered me a TV for $20, I talked them up to 40 So it's a good thing deals can't find me here. That's why I boarded the doors, it's their Achilles heel. I've known this for a while, that's why I keep nailed wood around my neck. With all those deals out there, I guess I just have to wait out the storm with games like Sportsman's Pack, two great games. There's been a breach! Video games are a business. The sooner I realized that, the smaller my family tree got. So you rope in the suckers who are willing to spend money and 60 of it on brand new releases. Then rope in the more reasonable suckers when the price gets dropped over time. But let me ask you, what's better than one game? You got me there. Well, you know, you have multiple games that may have outlasted their shelf life. Maybe put them together in one package for an affordable price, and you never no, know, it may just no, appeal to a brand new no, audience. No. I don't speak for everyone here, but getting multiple items bundled into one product makes things a whole lot easier. You kill two birds with one stone. I could get toilet paper by itself, or I could save a trip and buy it with ranch. And hey, video games take up a lot of space. Here's my Glover room. You get multiple video games in one affordable package. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking game compilations, stuff like Namco Museum, Sonic Mega Collection, those are taking old games you couldn't already play on that console and doing the unthinkable. Value Pack games take games you could already play on said system and bundling them together to make things more wacky and pathetic. These products just exist for people to go, wow, two in one. They aren't for fans, they aren't for diehards, they're merely in existence to make for better presents to give to kids half the time. It makes things more enticing, I can just buy this and get two presents out of the way. It's just odd because I don't ever think of these things. Nobody does. I didn't think too many of these multi-packs existed until I realized one of the most famous products of all time is a multi-pack. Vic? Two-in-one Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt. You know, much like Opium, you couldn't buy this at the store. This was bundled in with most Nintendo Entertainment System consoles and is easily one of the most common video games in existence. But I don't need to tell you that, you're probably already sitting on five of them. Obviously, this saves space in the console box while maintaining the value of two games included. And one of my favorite things about these multi-packs is seeing what kind of menu system they put in place to select the games. Fuck me. I have never found a mate that can do this. Mario and Duck Hunt is such a wonderful combination. They're so different yet fit so well together. When you're bored with one, the other should do the trick, and it's a good mix of traditional platforming gameplay and bloodshed. Most of the time, you'll see manufacturers put similar games together in one cartridge, but honestly, I really like what Nintendo did here. Two completely different games, but two games where most people interested in one would like the other. So f*** it, add a third. Three in one, Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt slash World Class Track Meet. The exact same song and dance as the last cartridge, but we finally have some value. World Class Track Meet used the power Power pad, all great world powers do. So adding a game where you have to run to a game where you e-run and a game where you get put on a list, you have a nice sampler of what the NES had to offer at the time. Again, this was only available in NES console bundles, and specifically console bundles that included the zapper and power pad accessories. And while this cartridge does bring a lot of variety with it, it is a bit clunky that all games included require different controllers. So yeah, watch me, cool party trick. I can play track meet after duck hunt in record time. Does anyone have a power pad in their trunk? I'll be right back. So then maybe this cartridge is a bit more worthwhile. Three in one, Super Mario Brothers slash Tetris slash Nintendo World Cup. There were three horsemen of the apocalypse. This multi-pack was only released in Europe and is somewhat hard to come by. And unlike the others, this got a full retail release. The games included are all your traditional NES games that use just the standard controller, so it's a more comfortable experience. I think Mario and Tetris go together quite well and Nintendo World Cup does satiate the jack of the family. Uh, no, I want to play soccer thing. Thank you. I'm no pussy, I don't like shapes. The multi-game cartridges weren't just a Nintendo thing though. Sega did them on the Master System, and even before that, they existed on the Atari 2600. Here's the Double Ender cartridge, where each end gives you a different game. I'm appalled and enthralled. But these value pack games truly became a hot commodity with Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, especially if they were console bundles. I'm sure many looked at that and went, wow, I cannot give a sh too. Combining pre-existing games into one product is an easy and effective way to get people to care if there was no way anybody would care otherwise. So you know Sega kept doing it. Sonic Classics, huh? Remember the classic Sonic games? It's 1997 and they sure don't make them like they used to in 1994. It's like when they re-released the first Call of Duty as Call of Duty Classic. This game's six years old. Sonic 1, 2, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Beam Machine all in one cartridge. This should be a staple in every multi-pack. But this cartridge pales in comparison to one Sega released earlier. Six pack. This one is a doozy. Sonic the Hedgehog, Golden Axe, Columns, Revenge of Shinobi, Super Hang on, Streets of Rage. Now this is a solid collection. I like these multi-packs with value and variety. When you have Sonic 1 and 2 included on the same cartridge, like, yeah, I'll accept it. But I'm probably just gonna play Sonic 2.
And when you have Mean Bean Machine next to it on top of that, it is no contest. Well, did Nintendo have any value packs that could compete with something like this? Here's Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World. Nintendo was trying to claim more dependence than they had that year. So basically, for some Super Nintendo console bundles, they included this exclusive version of Mario All-Stars with Mario World added in, and it's all pretty seamless. You'd think they just have a game select screen that says, listen, fucker, what do you want? But no, Mario World is incorporated into Mario All-Stars. They changed the title screen up, added the box art alongside all the other Mario games. They even updated Mario World itself a bit, changing how Luigi looks to make him look more Luigi. It's a strange amount of effort put into a simple multi-cart that was only available in specific SNES console bundles that were also only available for a limited amount of time. It's a shame this wasn't given a more wide release. Whenever Nintendo decides to re-release Mario All-Stars, it's always the original version, not the one with Mario World included. Maybe because it doesn't have Mean Bean Machine. Well, I'm f***ing disgusted, which is why, thankfully, as game consoles evolved, it became harder and harder to cram multiple games onto one cartridge. So, with the invention of discs, it became more and more feasible to put multiple games into one package, one of the greatest evolutions in gaming. Have you ever noticed ever since this release, life has been sh now this is the definition of a multi-pack. Two discs in one! I'm sure manufacturers were thrilled about this. I mean, you don't even have to program any menu setup. You can just take the exact same discs you printed for the standard copies and combine them with some others, print some new box art, and bam, you just gave up. The case itself often isn't even much bigger. You can fit quite a few discs in a standard sized case. There was no downside to this. But Tetris with Star Wars, I don't give a fuck. I saw Sega do this a lot. Here we have a Sonic Mega Collection Plus and Super Monkey Ball Deluxe combo pack for the original Xbox. It was released as a budget platinum hits title, and I gotta admit, the seven adjectives sold me. Obviously, this was a good deal. There's no lying to yourself about that. But there's something about these types of value packs that just feel cheaper to me. I wonder why. You don't get the original artwork, you get it all cropped and smaller, the spine looks dumb, this box looks like it's constantly trying to sell me on something I already own. It's like how movies are sold these days, so many flicks are forever destined to be exclusively sold in four movie packs, and you get this generic template logo on the front and on the spine, it's like, where do I put this in my collection? There's four completely different movies on it. Alphabetically, do I put this where the first movie they happen to list here goes? Like, why does this movie have more worth than this one? The same with Mega Collection and Monkey Ball. But at least with Sonic and Monkey Ball, these are both two similarly styled series. Uh, Sega also released a combo pack of Sega GT 2002 and Jet Set Radio Future because you know what? It roughly meets the requirements of a deal. Actually, this one was released only in certain console bundles and everything comes packed on one disc. That's pretty impressive. Xbox had some interesting dual pack console bundle sort of deals. They usually like to do this combo style on the spine. One side of the box had box art for one game. Oh God, what about the other? Oh, thank Christ. I wouldn't take a sh for anything less than Tetris Worlds. They continue this general style throughout the Xbox 360's lifespan and even into the Xbox Ones a bit. Except this one, you just get a very basic front and back. Back covers just aren't the same anymore. Over on the GameCube, they had a few shining examples like the Wind Waker and Metroid Prime console bundle combo pack. What a deal! It does save shelf space. Some companies started to do these box sets. They were cardboard sleeves housing full copies of the games. Again, a few of these have skyrocketed in value. Uh, some Sega box sets on the GameCube specifically. The Devil May Cry 5th Anniversary Collection, because let's celebrate it being 30 years off from running for office. And the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy, containing all the home console GTAs of that generation. This one I've seen wrapped for $20 at Walmarts everywhere, usually next to Nicorette. Of course, these don't take up any less space, if you don't start to comprehend the power of one millimeter of cardboard. These are the full set game boxes in here. The outer sleeve is just kind of neat. Fresh bonus, use it for food. Sony did this a ton with greatest hits re-releases. You can get some double packs of games this way, and a handful of GameCube and Xbox releases were like this as well. But I want a deal and more space for my feet. Well, the Game Boy Advance was truly a safe haven for value pack games. See, this system was so laser focused on kids and people who would buy Drill Dozer. Just so many releases. Games were flying everywhere. This was the era of licensed kids games. Pretty much with every movie, every cartoon, a video game adaptation would follow, and making those types of games for the Game Boy Advance just made sense. It was wildly popular. People were buying damn near anything on it. Game development on the platform was cheap as dirt. Of course the market was flooded. And when a game's popularity started to dwindle, publishers took it as an opportunity to repackage it alongside another or two on one Game Boy Advance cartridge for the ultimate Easter gift. This just screams Easter to me. These things were everywhere on the Game Boy Advance. I mean, it makes sense. The file sizes of these games were ass small. You could pop multiple on a cartridge and sell them for a deal, and it's even more attractive based on the portability factor. This way, you could bring two games on the road instead of just one. But I never realized just how many were released. For the kids, obviously, there's a lot of licensed games combined onto one cartridge. The Shark Tale and Shrek 2 combo cartridge, for when you just can't pick who to shoot. SpongeBob SquarePants Super Sponge and SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. You know, I 
since Super Sponge on the PlayStation 1, I always wanted it for the Game Boy Advance. Couple that with a Game Boy Advance game I did own being included on the cartridge, and I'm pretty miffed I never owned this until now. Just think about how different my life would be if I had this as a kid. However, I mean, these are both SpongeBob games, both 2D platformers. At least with the Shrek and Shark Tail combo, we had some variety in brand. Well, don't you worry, because THQ did release a multi cart with Super Sponge on it and three other games. The fabled 4-in-1. I've seen staplers with better labels. It's pretty cool considering this one has all different Nickelodeon shows represented within each game, just like Sportsman's Pack. Fishing or hunting? I, I, I don't care, just give me a fucking gun. Cartoon Network had this double pack here. Listen, I'm just saying, you could always tell a Cartoon Network kid from a Nickelodeon one. We were a respectable breed. But hey, licensed games weren't the only culprits. Sonic Advance and Pinball Party, Pac-Man World and Maze Madness, double, triple, or even quadruple packs on Game Boy Advance were a way of life. Even when it came to movies. The Game Boy Advance video double pack featuring Shark Tale and Shrek. Not Shark Tale and Shrek 2, Shark Tale and Shrek. The movies, not the games. Most of the content released via Game Boy Advance video were television shows, but a few movies were released, and two of those movies were squeezed onto a single cartridge for some reason. I think Majestic could just wanted their dad's approval. This is a fairly impressive accomplishment for the time. Most games on these combo cartridges weren't compromised, but with these movies, they definitely look worse than they did on their own single carts. It's a sacrifice, but you were already sacrificing a bit to watch movies on the Game Boy Advance anyway, so at the time, this did the job. The Game Boy Advance was a wild time to multi-pack, oh, that generation specifically. There was a ton, but they never went away. I just don't think anybody really notices them. They just exist for people who could use them, but don't leave much of an impression other than that. There's been some interesting cases, Cases like Lego Harry Potter on Wii plus the first Harry Potter movie on DVD or when DiGiorno packed pizza and breadsticks together. This is an interesting one that I didn't know existed until recently. A few Wii systems came bundled in with both Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort, but I never knew they came on the same disc and had a unique startup and menu select screen. I want to wear this disc as a ring. I love it. The Bioshock and Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion double pack. Because f*** it, that's why. NES Remix pack on Wii U, taking two digital only Wii U titles and not only releasing them physically, but packing them on the same disc. It always bugged me they didn't combine these two titles. NES Remix 1 and 2 are pretty much the exact same game, but with different NES titles represented. Like, it would have been cool to have all the games a part of the same menu interface, like what they did with Super Mario World and Super Mario All-Stars. Pokemon's been doing these box set releases if you want both of the Pokemon games that come out at the same time. And Nintendo's done this thing where Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Super Mario Party are bundled together. There's basically a million ways to purchase all the Kingdom Hearts games on PlayStation 4. This one has the HD remasters of 1, 2, and Dream Job Distance, and this one has all of that. And the third game, at a painfully low price. It's really unfortunate if somebody just wants to play the first game and nothing more. F*** you, you're getting all of them. It's like how junk food's cheaper than fruit. Throughout all this though, it's clear to me Sega is the most consistent at releasing multi-packs. They've done it ever since the Sega Master System and they did it with the Nintendo Switch. The Sonic Mania plus Team Sonic Racing double pack and the Banana Blitz HD plus Sonic Forces double pack. Which one's the better value? The Nintendo Switch has had a few multi-pack game card releases where when you pop the game card in, both games just appear on the menu, which is pretty slick. So even when these Sega releases are just on one card, they don't have a unique menu setup or whatever. The system just acts like you put in two game cards at once. But nothing Sega does will ever live up to their Sonic PC Collection release. If you include all the games included in Sonic Mega Collection Plus and the unlockable bonus games in Sonic Adventure DX, there are nearly 30 games in this set. At that point, did they really have to include Sonic Riders? Oh man, we can't just not include one more game. The people won't fall for that. They aren't stupid. They like Sonic! And there's a lot more of these things than I initially thought, and it's getting to the point where I feel like I just have to embrace the fact they exist. Some people still like to have physical games, but they like the slimmer packaging with two discs in one. It's cool to see the unique menus, and while the box art is compromised and kind of cheesy, I can't help but admire the fact that these bundles help bring in new customers that may not have experienced these games otherwise. Wait. I mean, ha ha ha, f these things.